let's talk about the most underrated makeup launches of this year. I picked out the ones that I think are like the top five that should have gotten more attention than they did, but for some reason, I did not hear much about these. And I'm excited to say this portion of today's video is sponsored by Ana Luisa. You guys know I've been working with them for quite a few years now, and I'm gonna walk you guys through what I'm wearing. Also, when I just held my hands up like this just now, do you guys see? I have one press-on nail that is hanging on for dear life on my pinky that I cannot get off. Thankfully, the set I was wearing was pretty neutral, so it's not like a hot pink here alone, but this one will not come off and I don't wanna break my fingernail. So let me tell you guys about the jewelry I'm wearing right now. This is all Ana Luisa, the earrings, the necklace. You've seen me wear many times before, but let's talk about these rings. If you are unfamiliar with the brand, they are a sustainable jewelry company based here in New York City. They are based in Brooklyn and they use tons of recycled materials both in their jewelry within the metals, but also the way that they ship. They are carbon neutral. I just love their mission and I love their jewelry. So the rings I'm wearing today, I've got three on. This one is the Clio. It is a snake and this is nice too because it's a little bit adjustable. You could bend it a bit if it wasn't quite the right size for you and i love a snake piece of jewelry i have the snake earrings that they make also maybe i should wear them together i just think this is really cute kind of like wraps around your finger i feel like i need to hold my hand like this so you don't see my missing finger now now on this hand i stacked two pieces this larger almost like chunky geometric ring is called the evan and then kind of hovering above that i put the mallory which has almost like a little chevron v to it with some jewels I kind of like how like big the Evan is. This one you could wear just on your on its own or you could do a nice stack on your hands of a bunch of rings. But I love, don't get me wrong, I love a dainty ring, but I also love kind of bigger, chunkier rings like this. I think they're really pretty, especially if I had my nails done right now. I think it would be a cute look. I do have a code, I will pop it on the screen here that will get you 20% off on their website. Definitely check out the link in the description box. Thank you to Ana Luisa for partnering with me all throughout 2022. I have loved working together. And now let's go ahead and hop into the products that I think needed more hype in 2022. This first one, you guys, for some of these, I blame myself. You know, I, I should have been talking about these more, starting with this right here. This foundation, I feel like I haven't even talked about too, too much. I mean, I definitely have mentioned it, but it's from Tarte and it is their powder gem foundation. This is a loose powder foundation, which I mean, let's be real, you guys, that in itself is the main reason this didn't go viral this year because powder foundation just doesn't get a lot of attention. But, but I've mentioned in like multiple predictions videos over the years, every year I'm like, next year, is gonna be the year of powder foundation. And then it doesn't happen and I'm like, okay, next year is gonna be the year of powder foundation. But you guys, I actually do think 2023 is gonna be the year of powder foundation. I I did see Maybelline, Maybelline's not cruelty free, but they did, they are launching like a new powder foundation that I saw. And so I'm like, okay, Fenty did launch a powder foundation this year. I feel like we're starting to see them here and there. And I'm just so optimistic that 2023 is gonna be bam, tons of powder foundations. But this one, when this launched, I immediately ordered it. I do have a wear test review video of this if you wanna see it applied to my face. I have mine in the shade 20N Light Neutral. This is very similar to my all-time favorite powder foundation, which is the Bare Minerals Mineral Veil. This, when I wore this on camera in that video, initially testing it out, I had so many comments from people saying that they were shocked that I was wearing a powder foundation because of how glowy my skin looked. So I think even if you have dry skin, powder foundation can be so flattering. It doesn't have to leave your skin dry. Some powder foundations do, but not all of them. I did a video last year during Vlogmas ranking, well, no, not ranking, but reviewing all of my powder foundations. This one didn't exist at the time, so it's not in that video, but I can leave the video linked down below if you're starting to dabble in powder foundations also. Okay, this one, I love it. Does anyone else do this? When I go to Starbucks or anywhere and I get a to-go cup, later for the rest of the day, any hot drink I make, I have to put in said to-go cup because I don't know. It's more of an experience when you're drinking it through this cup. It's like I've tricked myself into thinking I went and got Starbucks twice today. This next one comes from Janessa Myricks and it is the Yummy Skin Serum Primer. Now I do feel like the balm 
part of this line did get a little bit of attention, probably because it's a similar style product to, I feel like we were just seeing a lot of balms this year, you know? But this primer is actually so good, you guys. And I feel like, again, I blame myself. I should have been hyping this one up more. And it was in a video earlier this week where I mentioned every product I bought at Sephora this year. And this came up in that video and I said, why am I not using this more often? And so immediately after that, I, I put it in my everyday makeup drawer and I've been using it pretty much every day. Today is actually the first day I haven't used it since then. But somebody asked me the other night, they said, your base looks really nice. Like what products are you wearing? What foundation, primer, everything? This was the primer. I was wearing this. I was wearing Fenty Eavesdrop. But I feel like, don't get me wrong, Fenty Eavesdrop is beautiful. So I think that was also doing a lot of the work. But I feel like this alone being more of that serum-y primer gave me enough of that hydration on my dry, peely, cracked winter skin for the foundation to just lay very beautifully over top. I feel like even though this isn't silicone-y and it's not, it's not technically a smoothing primer, I find the amount of hydration it provides me without being greasy actually results in my skin looking smooth even though the intended purpose of this is not to smooth my skin. I think this is beautiful. I love the smell of it. I mean, it would probably be better if it wasn't fragranced because I prefer fragrance-free products for my skin, but something about this smells like honeydew or some melon type of product. I love it. Okay, this one from Kaja. So we saw cream products, I mean, for years now. For the last couple of years, that has been the theme, cream products. Cream bronzers, blush, highlight, this year especially was very cream bronzer heavy, but I still feel like the excitement over cream blush spilled into most of 2022. But I didn't hear much about this one. And this one I just think is so underrated. This is from Kaja. This is their whipped blush. First of all, it's adorable. The packaging, this brand nails packaging every single time. I have mine in the shade two. This does come in four shades. And this is actually, I'm sorry, I put that right by the microphone. You probably heard this, the sound of this opening and it's not a very satisfying sound, but this formula is actually quite unique for a liquid blush because it is that whipped formula. It's matte, but it's not a drying matte. It's a matte that lasts. That's, that's where I'm going with that. So if we're talking about just cream and liquid blushes in general, a lot of times those super dewy ones, they look amazing when you first apply them, but like they're gone like that. The fades so fast. Blush already fades quickly. And when it's a really dewy finish, it's it doesn't have the longevity. But this, it sets down quite well, but it's not a flat drying matte. Like your skin still has some life and almost this satin finish to it. It stays in place though. One thing I will mention on this, because of that, you almost have to work a bit quicker. I would not do the, do you remember when the like one layer makeup trend was super viral there where you would apply your all of your cream products at once? So you would have like the bronzer stripe, the highlight stripe, the blush stripe, the, the, the concealer, like you would do the full face and then go in and blend it. This formula is not gonna work well with that. Like by the time you finish applying everything, you go to tap it out, you've lost your chance. So I would say work quickly, but it's beautiful. And this color in particular is such a pretty pink nude. Okay, enough about this, but I love it. I think it should have been more hyped up. Same with this palette. So obviously I'm biased. This is a Sigma palette and you know I love Sigma. But this one in particular, the new mod that launched in the spring, when I first saw this palette, I thought, okay, yeah, this is gonna get a lot of attention. And I would say it had its moment, but not to the level that I was expecting for it to. And again, this could be on me. I feel like even looking at it here, I'm like, why didn't I use this more this year? It's a beautiful palette. It's this really pretty purple pink color story. And in the beginning, I was definitely hearing people talk about it, but initially when I saw this, I was expecting it to be a very, very like hyped up big launch in 2022. And I don't feel like it was. And for me, let me know how you guys have felt with palettes this year. I've said in a few videos, palettes haven't really been my jam for 2022. I've been more into a very simple eye look, whether that is just bronzer or like just one single shadow tapped onto the lid for like a scattered sparkly effect. 
but I haven't been going for the more intricate eyeshadow looks that I was such a big fan of a few years ago. And I don't know, maybe that's why I didn't reach for this too much. I feel like my palettes in general, I said in another video recently, I just have not been super palette focused lately. But this one I should probably put into my everyday makeup basket pretty soon here. I should start using this more because it's such a pretty pink palette. What do you guys think were like the viral palettes this year? The ones that I was seeing the most as of recently, definitely the new makeup by Mario palette. Also, I feel like uh, the Natasha Denona My Dream palette, but I don't feel like palettes were the it makeup category this year. What do you guys think? Okay, moving along. These, these little eyeshadows from Flower Beauty. Flower Beauty, I think in general, is just criminally underrated. I think that they're such a high quality, consistent drugstore brand. Not everything is good. Not everything is good, obviously, because that, that can never be the case with any brand, but there, there are more favorites than flops. Okay, let me say that. So they came out with these Chrome Crushed Pressed Pigments this year, and these are such a beautiful formula, you guys. When you see the swatch of this, it is mesmerizing. So these, I would almost describe, okay, it is the baby of a ColourPop Super Shock shadow and a ColourPop Jelly Much shadow, you know? It's not as intense as a Jelly Much, but it's not... It almost has the spongy texture of a Super Shock. Like, it, it's somewhere in the middle. And if that sounds good to you, you will probably love these. The first thing I will say, though, these don't pick up on a brush. So if you are not about the applying with your finger type of life, you will hate this. But, because the brush, you're going to dip your brush in and nothing's really going to come up. But if you want, like, a wet look on your lid, you want this intensity from a $10 drugstore eyeshadow, this will achieve that. I did a best drugstore eyeshadows video last Friday for Affordable Friday. I mentioned these in there. I just think they're so beautiful. Okay, those in my opinion were the most underrated products this year. Let me know if you've tried any of these and if you have any underrated products for 2022. Thank you to Ana Luisa for partnering with me on today's video. Be sure to check out the link in the description box and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.